All right. Well, uh, I want Thaddeus to get back here, but he's doing a good deed. So we'll go ahead and start without him, and I know he'll pop back in here in a few minutes. All right, you ready? Um, and since she's running around too, uh, I'll go ahead and open us up in prayer for this one. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for this wonderful opportunity uh, for all of us to be here. Uh, a bunch of lives coming together in weird, unusual, and exciting ways. Lord, I pray that, uh, that this course has been one that will change the course of someone else's life and will um, give them a new excitement for either uh, art or may it be the stepping stone that leads them to something even bigger and even more exciting. Whatever the case may be, uh, we wish your will and your, your praise and your honor be put into all of that as we move forward with our lives. Thank you very much for this moment in time that you've given us, though. We do pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to very quickly pop back in here since I was watching over my video last night and do a very quick follow-up on noses. I think you already have the basic premise of what we're going to, of, of the nose that we talk about. And I told you I was going to tell you a couple basic shapes that were going to help you build out the nose. And I only gave you the button nose. So let me very, very quickly, very quickly cover just a few other things that you may need to keep an eye out on noses. It'll be a quick and painless extra lesson uh, to, to add to, but no big deal at all. Okay, so you're gonna have the button nose, which is the pretty average on younger ladies and different, you know, a, a different age groups and, uh, excuse me, different races. And then you're gonna have the guys on the polar opposite, you know, our gentleman that we drew yesterday uh, that had the very large Roman schnoz. Now, Roman schnoz can be covered in two lines, quite literally two lines. Um, if you're drawing them straight forward, uh, it's a line that can come down like this, and then all you got to do is think, okay, do I see nostrils? Usually on a Roman nose, you will not see a nostril, and so you'll simply draw the nostril and a down arrow. Quite literally, that's the nose, and you would put the eyebrow here, an eyebrow here, and an eye here, and there you go, you have your downwards facing schnoz per se, yeah. And that's literally all that's down to. Now, of course, if you want to add extra detail, you're going to be looking for the size of the round portion of the front of their nose. Uh, right here, every person has a round circular, it's like a, like a marble in their nose, and that marble's different sizes. And you look at that marble on the front of the nose, and you decide, is that a tiny little marble on the front, or is it a big marble? And whatever the case may be, that's how you decide to add your extra little details, whatever the case may be. Three areas of the nose that you want to pay attention to. Let me go ahead and draw another nose here. And this one's a little bit more indicative to my nose. Um, three areas. Oh, I hear feet. Sorry. No problem. Thanks, man. Yes. Have a seat. Welcome back. Thanks for being a good Samaritan there. Good job. Three areas that you want to pay attention to the nose is really quick here are going to be the, the bridge, the high point. This is right between the eyes. Uh, this area is going to help you figure out how close the eyes are together or separate. If you draw this smaller, you want to bring the eyes closer together. If this is thicker, you want to bring the eyes further apart. Okay, it's a really basic, basic thing. Uh, for certain people, you may find that you have a bump on your nose. If you feel down your nose, if you feel a bump right here in this quadrant of your nose, then that is a fun area to exaggerate as well. Uh, some people have it and some people don't uh, and if you uh, and and even if you feel it there If it's not something you're seeing when you're looking in the mirror Don't worry about it and the best way to tell is if you look from the side If you see that your nose comes out and then goes down and it comes out and goes down almost like a stair step That is worth exaggerating. Okay, and then finally down here We come to that ball that marble that I was quickly talking about that could be right here And that's where you want to go ahead and figure out how big or small that ball is and that's how you make your decision on how big the tip of the nose is. Make sense? Pretty basic, pretty easy sort of sort of stuff. Okay, um, that's really the only two noses you really need to know about. What you choose to do with them from that point forward is up to you. Because whether you're using a button nose or you're using a Roman nose, each one of them is going to have different levels of exaggeration and will lead you to the nose that's in front of you. And trust me, if you get someone with a really crazy schnoz that's just blowing your mind off, uh, mind out you can make your way from either way, whether it's whether they, I've seen gentlemen who, when they sit in front of me, here's looking at this from a three quarters perspective, they will have a bump 
like crazy here, and then they will have another bump like this. And then right here is where their nostril's gonna be, and this is gonna work back. You're gonna see this in much older gentlemen uh, who are sunbound, who've been in the sun for quite some time. Usually what will happen, how many of you guys know what blackheads are? I'm assuming mm -hmm. you all know what blackheads are pretty well. Mm -hmm. Those blackheads grow and grow and grow, they get um, bigger and bigger and bigger, and as they get bigger, they deform the nose. Uh, and as they make those deformations over time, the nose holds that quadrant and doesn't move. And usually it's those guys who will have to either have plastic surgery. Uh, some of you might like Dr. Pimple Popper on YouTube. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that'll, that'll give you the qualification of the kind of things that she does. Um, and and that's, that's just what you will have sitting in front of you many, many times in older individuals. And just because they, the, uh, a, a lot of firefighters will have a lot of black blackheads because of the soot that they deal with and how their skin gets dirty, things like that. That's a very, uh, very crazy thing like that. Third world countries deal with that quite a bit as well. And so it's a very interesting thing and, and what it can do to your skin. And you don't know that. And it's a good thing you don't know that because... You would be very aware of it if you were dealing with it. So you're safe. I hope. <laughs> the, the, the basic premise is just keep an eye out and you, between the two noses I've just showed you, you're safe across the board. Um, did I show you um, the basic premise of mouths? I don't think I did. I'm gonna quickly knock these out. I feel like I have more time today just because uh, we're, we're, we have a little bit of extra space to wiggle. There's no other classes around us, so we can just kind of flow, ebb and flow with what we want. Really quickly on mouths. Mouth, straight line, not exactly. Best way to think of a mouth is to think of it like this. You can make a, uh, like a, what do they, what do they call that, what do they call that line on a keyboard? That, that's not a tittle, is it? Yeah, I guess it's something like that. It's, it, and uh, whatever that, whatever that term is, that, that key in the top left corner of your keyboard, uh, that is basically what the general shape of the human mouth is. On top of that, you're going to have your lips, which continue to follow that form in exaggeration. You want to pay attention to the top lip. Another thing to keep an eye out for on the top lip is this top lip form right here. This can actually literally have a point on it like this. And it can also build upward like this. Now, actually, this young gentleman with the Spider-Man shirt has that exact, exact top lip. So go ahead and just be straight faced and take a look around, try not to smile. And, and he has that structure on that top lip. There, there is a push of top lip here built out of that. And, and there is a, a lot of us just have a, a, a pillow for a top lip. Some of us don't have a structure, a construction, and he does. Uh, that, that means you can build some of that form. A way to tell is, uh, thank you for being my model today, Benjamin, um, is if you look at his top lip, you'll see a highlight point just below, just below, just below his mustache there. And that, that highlight point is how you can tell how high you need to draw those lips. And with his, it's a, it's a very key part of his face, so why not exaggerate it? And that's usually not a big deal. Now, an important thing to note, uh, usually guys try not to draw the top lip on guys. It's a very feminine thing to add to a guy, so if you do it, you gotta do it carefully. Um, I stick with bottom lips for guys and top lips for girls. Uh, and as much as possible, well, and, and of course bottom lips for girls too, but um, another rather important rule is try not to draw eyelashes on guys, especially boys. I have drawn thousands of boys, and their mothers are so incredibly proud of their child's eyelashes. And, and I would know because my mother was incredibly proud of my eyelashes. And, uh, and they would sit down in front of me and I would draw them and the mother's so incredibly excited about how this piece is going and then she says one thing, she goes, can you give my child eyelashes? And I will warn them, I don't care how this boy's hairstyle is, I don't care how manly I've made his face, I say, I'm gonna warn you, if I add even a single eyelash to this kid's eyes, he's gonna go instant female. Yeah. And, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, right, Susie? <laughs> yep. and, and they will go, oh, it's okay. I, I, I trust you to add the eyelash properly. All right, you're paying for it. Do we have an understanding? We do. Okay, chunk, chunk. And there you go. Next thing you know, I look at her and she goes, oh. And that's all you need to know. I, I, I told her 
The doctor said don't do it, you went and you did it, and there you go, the deed is done, and you're still paying for your caricature whether you like it or not. There are very few cases where you can get away with eyelashes. Let me show you one in particular because I did it on my piece. Okay. Um, the only reason I'm able to get away with this is simply because of all the manly features I've truly tried to pronounce in this. This is in no way a female structure. That beard is as, literally, if I take my hands, let me try not to drop my recorder here. If I take my hands and I take them and I put them at the width of the beard and I move them up equally, they are literally as big as the head in proportion roughly. So I've given so much male proportion, I'm safe. And obviously a beard does help. If you are drawing a kid though, a kid you are already dealing with bringing their face down and giving them that child perspective because you're giving them more forehead, you are in a very large gray danger zone. So the instant that you decide to add eyelashes, you're in trouble. Um, uh, there is a, a many, many artists, Mort Drucker, um, uh, Thomas, oh Tom, Tom, oh I forget, Mad Magazine artists. And uh, there's one gentleman, amazing, Tom Richmond, that's his name, uh, does an amazing job with his caricatures and he draws eyes with eyelashes on guys. And he's very, very good at it. But if you look at the guys that he's adding those eyelashes to, he's either trying to make them gently feminine because these guys are such pretty boys, they need that little touch of feminine, uh, or they are older men and he's given them so many wrinkles and shapes and structural forms that, that equal out to that. And that's where you... Not where you... only that, a female wants more eyelashes than that. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> and, and curly ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so as we're talking about the idea of lips and stuff, uh, just be careful how much top lip you add on boys and how many eyelashes you add. Not on boys, just don't do it. Just don't do it for boys. For men, make some considerations. Um, okay, uh, when it comes to lips and smiles and stuff, there's a couple different smiles you're going to be dealing with. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. You have a perfect uh, expression for this. Here's one thing that you have. You can have a smile that happens, but not at the corners of the mouth. Okay, so like this, and the lip is going to be built off like this, and the teeth will come off like this, but you will basically hold all this stage right here. Exactly, what, you, what you're doing there, that, that, that tightening right here as you're smiling, there's a lot of people who deal with that. And, and it's not a deal with it, it's, it's how your face, how the muscles in your face will work, okay? And, and there's nothing wrong with that smile, uh, and, and you just need to know how to attack it when it's time to draw it. Because a lot of us will go, okay, how do I draw a smile? Well, I'm obviously just gonna go like this, and then the smile's gonna come way down here, and here we go, you know, and you're just going to go ahead and do this whole structural thing, but really you're, you've already drawn these corners of the mouth far too high when they should be low and the upper lip should be going above them, you know. It's, it, you could almost call it a smirk. You could, almost, you could almost call it like a forced grin. If you can catch those people when they're absolutely enjoying themselves, having a good time, there's a different shape to the mouth. It depends on the situation, okay? Um, Finally, you may have someone who's the polar opposite and they don't have this central bump here. Okay, a lot of people don't have that central bump. And if you don't have that central bump, I usually try my best, if, if I'm drawing someone like this, to really try to exaggerate at the corners of the mouth to get that form, right? So if I draw in my teeth here like this, per se, and, and try to keep that form or whatever. I'm trying to exaggerate the smile because their mouth turns down for the most part. So you gotta find some way to get the smile out of it and so you fight it. And the, where, where, do I, where do I put the smile the most, guys? Remind me where I told you guys the easiest place is to put the smile. Front of the nose? Nope. Alright, I'll give you two. One. Alright, it's in the eyes. Remember that squint? Oh, 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 yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so there you go. I, I love that I caught you off guard there. So yeah, it's in the eyes. Remember, get that smile in the eyes. Whatever you do to the mouth, who cares? You know, you, you, uh, you'll, you'll fight for likeness, but remember, get that squint in the eyes. You're going to be doing yourself a big favor. Or what we call the squinch. Squinch. You're raising up the bottom lip. Okay? All right. So I think I've covered mouths. I've covered eyes. Uh, I've covered teeth. Uh, if you want braces, 
All you gotta do, draw a line across the braces like that. Do, do, a, do a nice thin line, try not to go too thick. And then a couple circles. And you get yourself your braces. I mean, literally, you can just go that simple on braces, and it'll be just fine. If you if you have someone with a with a crazy grin, like like out of town grin, kind of like like a like a horse kind of grin or whatever, uh, you know, maybe they have um, well, what's the word I'm looking for, buck teeth or whatever. You can exaggerate their braces a little different. What I do is I draw two squares, and and I build the squares, you know, off the teeth. And then I'll take that off the line, kind of like that. And and so it depends. If you're going to put a lot of expression and time into drawing the teeth, and you're going to make the teeth a big proponent of their face, and they have the gums, then you need to go ahead and add the add that in there, unless they tell you not to. And many people will tell you not to. A lot of mothers, if they have a girl, usually if the girl is maybe six months into wearing her braces, the girl, the mothers love it, and they want the braces in there. If the girl's about to have her braces removed, then they don't want them. Guys, most guys don't want their braces. You know, it, it depends on the scenario. Okay, so we've covered eyes. We've covered the nose. We've covered the mouth. Ear structure very, very quickly. There's three areas of the ear that you're going to have to pay attention to. If you look at my face, um, you have very uh, symmetrical ears. They, they go out the same direction. Everything's pretty balanced. My ears are completely different. So, I, and, and you might not be able to see. I don't know how clearly you can see, and I'll try to turn my face for each of you, one of my ears kind of stays inward and the other one kind of points out right at the top. Okay, so there's a symmetrical imbalance on my ears. Now you might not notice, once again, that's something that's very subtle and something that you have to spot. And if you can't really spot it, then it's not really something to exaggerate. If you spotted it, well then attack the thing, you know, go for it. Um, but here's your basic structure of your ear. You can cheat with ears. Mickey Mouse, he has four fingers, and the reason he has four fingers is because it's cheaper to animate four fingers than it is to animate five fingers. You're welcome. That's an interesting tidbit from Disney. So, in the same situation, um, ears, unless they are a big part like uh, Thaddeus's face, his ears are a major part of his face. So you kind of want to get the detail down just a little bit. Here's where you want to pay attention to ears. So when I draw an ear, there's two basic sh shapes that you want to keep an eye on. The top of the ear shape up here. Is there a square up there? Is it pointed? What direction does that ear, um, it, it, what direction is it going? Is it folding over? Is it, uh, you know, whatever, whatever direction that ear is going, that's going to be a key, a key thing for you. Okay, everyone has different ears. Some of them, it's part of a, the exaggeration. Some of them, it's just a, another part of the face that you can just draw, okay? And don't forget, like we said about uh, proper proportions, your ear lines up with the top of your eyebrow and the bottom of your nose. And if I didn't mention that in the class, in the first class, I might not have. I apologize. Let me quickly jump out of here and find that first initial uh, training. Did I have that here? Okay. I didn't even cover that. So check this out. Um, we were talking about this whole perspective. So if the eyebrows are on this point here, the bottom of the nose and the top of the eyebrow, that is where your ear goes, okay? Um, and that will change if the person's looking up, if they're looking down. Your ears are going to lift if they're looking down. They're going to go down if you're looking up because your face is in front of your ears, so you're on a tilt, okay? So that's to keep in mind. So if this person is looking up like this, then you've got to think about the ears being below that point of adjustment. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. All right, so we've, we've covered that. I'm sorry I didn't cover that on day one as I should have. Uh, going back to the next part, uh, obviously the earlobe. Everyone has different earlobes, and you got those punks who get the gauges, the big, no. big, big gauges, which are super fun to draw. Um, and and it, that's going to change the shape of the earlobe, obviously. If you have uh, jewelry that's a little bit heavier, that's going to pull on those earlobes as well. Earlobes are a very fun thing to pay attention to. Some people won't have any earlobes at all. They will just go right into the face. Others will have the earlobes that kind of pop outward or pop down. There may even be a line, a crease in their earlobe. If it's that prominent, then put it in. If not, then that's up to you. Okay, the inner shape is what freaks everybody out, right? You're usually curious about how to handle the inner shape. I do it really easily. I could care less. Here's what I do. I create the upper ear just like that 
then I bring this down and I bring the little bump that's on everybody's ears right here, okay? Right, and, and usually what I'll do is I'll kind of close that off, but not completely. I'm just creating that shape. That's, that's, that's the gist of, of the, the first phase of the ear. I only do about three parts to an ear. I draw it in 15 seconds or less because all I'm really looking for, the detail is not going to be in the inner ear. It's going to be in the outer ear. It's going to be the shape of the outer ear and how it affects the face. The inner ear, if unless they have a worm sticking out of it, don't put detail into it, okay? Yeah. That's the rule of thumb. Unless you see something absolutely outrageous that fell into their ear in the middle of the night and it's crawling its way out, you're safe, okay? All right, next what you want to do is you want to draw that inner ear. It's going all the way into the lobe. So what I do is I simply draw that inner ear point. You put a lot of shadow into that when you're coloring and things like that. And if I happen to have my caricature that I drew of this gentleman. I, okay, I didn't do much to his ear, but I mean, take a look at the simplicity that I put into his ear. This is literally one of my favorite caricatures, uh, face caricatures that I've drawn. Uh, I love the exaggeration in his mouth and things like that, but look at how little. I put into the ear. That was a chicken scratch, literally a chicken scratch. Uh, and it, what do you pay more attention to? The whole rest of the face. Who cares about the ear? The only reason that I have the ear placed where it is is I kind of have him come doing this. So I chose to put the ear lower just to add to the exaggeration form. And then, uh, and technically, even though it should line up with the top of the eyebrow because I've exaggerated the eyebrow so much, I lined it up to the top of the eye, kind of roughly where the eyebrow would have naturally have landed in comparison to where I, the point I exaggerated it to. The exaggeration was in the front of his face, not the back of his face. So that's why I put it where I chose to put it. Um, now, to, now, to finish off, we have a couple of weird little extra shapes in our ear. So we got that inner bump, but if you feel in your ear, you got a couple extra little digs, ins, and outs, and things like that. So the way I quickly add to that is I simply add a line over top, and I may take a line up to the top like that, and just kind of that. That's honestly, if I'm going to put detail into the ear, that's all I do. That's it. It's the, it's the simplest, quickest form of an ear that you get. And here's the thing, if you're drawing someone like this, and he has an ear, you're not going to put all that time and effort into it because that ear is kind of here on the side of his head. And it's much less compressed, so literally I'll just go like that, and that, and if I feel a need, maybe that. Literally, I mean, it's just a couple quick lines. Looks like an ear, right? Yep. All right, simple as that. Piece of cake. We go home, we make some money. We go buy dinner at McDonald's. It's all good. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead now and move on to buddies. I think we've covered hair. Hair. Oh, okay, well, well let's, go and, let's go and knock out hair then. Uh, let me go ahead and open up this one. I don't think I have anything on this. Still on the head, so that works. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. All right, hair shapes. That's literally all this comes down to. Do not draw individual hairs. Do not, do not, do not draw individual hairs. I'm going to go ahead and make a ball right here. And this ball is going to be named Trump. <laughs> okay, I think we get the idea. I'm going to grab some orange. And now we begin thinking of shapes. You're not going to begin drawing Trump uh, or anybody with, with the basic theory of like individual hairs It's just no. You're 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 not getting anywhere with that structure. There's there's no nothing there. That's why we do shape. We look how many shapes there are. It's really easy to look at someone's head and go, okay, I see a basic shape there, basic shape there, basic shape there. One, two, three. All right. So I got about five shapes I got to work with. All right. So Trump's head comes down to for me two really important shapes. Obviously, the top the top here and this fairly basic shape. Can if I do that, your pencil? darken it more? Darken it more? Yeah, yes, okay. please. All right, I can darken it. I can do that. All right, and actually here, we'll even take it bigger. How about if I go with my fill pen? A little better? Yes. Much. Thank okay. You. All right, now I, I'll attest that there might be two more shapes involved here. One is going to be the side that goes to the head and the ear, and the opposite side. 
Looks kind of like a trumpet head, doesn't it? Yeah. Very so slightly. Okay, now that's, I drew that in three shapes. It's that simple. So as you're looking at anybody's head, you can build their head in just a couple sh shapes. If they have really long hair, what you're looking for is where the hair overlaps over itself. So, uh, and every person's going to be different. You're going to find that over time. Uh, how do you add detail to this? If you want to add detail, then you begin doing generalized hair shaping. And you want to basically draw for each hair. Each hair is like a clump of hairs, and it's trying to show direction, if you feel like you need to show direction. Okay, for a girl, girls are much more challenging in many ways. Okay. And so when it comes to a girl, you want to, um, you want to think about what direction their hair is going as it comes down their face. Okay, we're going to go ahead and draw another head. I have no name for this one because Trump was funnier. <laughs> and, uh, and basically now what we're going to look at is how high does the hair sit. Once again, like I said, if your hair is pulled back in a bun, it's pulled really tight to your scalp. So you're not going to do anything really to the top of your head except show that it's pulled tight. Now let's do this. Let me show you this. Let's, let's do this. Boop. Boop. Okay. Where's our Asian girl here? Look at her hair. That's basically painted to her scalp, right? Yeah. So you're not going to do anything to the head. You're simply going to draw within the head shape. And that will affect your forehead. Simple as that. Piece of cake. I think we got that down. Here, not really much hair on top of the head, so don't add too much to the top of the head. Add, keep it all inside and add more. Curls. Um, curl structuring is going to stink, uh, but really when it comes down to it, a curl structure, you're going to have to choose and to make those shapes and those forms. I usually just try to build the curls over top each other. And, and literally, I'm just bouncing them off of each other. Okay? And, and roughly, that'll be curls. Now, sometimes you get girls and they got um, uh, cornrows. Oh. Cornrows are pretty challenging. Uh, now, I, there are so many great tutorials out there on drawing, uh, on drawing um, braids. My trick, and it's a terrible trick, just, but I've gotten away with it. Let's just say I've gotten away with it. Let's say I'm not good at it. But usually what I'll do is I will draw a line like this and another line like that. Like that, like that, like that. And I will do that going down. Now I will try to connect the lines like this, and that's actually how I do any braid, period. It looks roughly like a braid, doesn't it? I mean, it, yeah. it's not perfect. It's not a three-point braid. It's a braid. <laughs> but it's, it's good enough. It's going to get the job done. And especially if you have uh, um, an African-American young woman who just had all of her cornrows put in. She's got ten rows of braids. That's a long day. None of us want to deal with that much time. So, so you, you, you learn to just get by in those situations. Okay, uh, let's go ahead now and instead of uh, the curly effect here, let's go ahead and give this hair, let's turn this weird hair thing, this bowling ball into a girl. Uh, one of the things I first look for is the widow's peak on a girl. And I see where the widow's peak sits on, on their heads. Sometimes it can be on the side, sometimes it can be on the other side, sometimes it can be square in the middle, or there's no widow peaks at all whatever the case may be on that, then you begin doing your definition in form to that. I look at, if the hair is standing off the head, that means you have something called volume. You girls know it's on every single soap bottle you buy. And so when you are trying to add volume, you want to build off the head. That's where we're trying to make it look like uh, Dolly Parton or whatever the case may be. One of the things I look for uh, first is this first wave. Is there a wave coming over the eye? Is there a wave coming this way? Where's that wave going? And, and depending on if it looks like it's raising up or whether it looks like it's coming over the face, whatever the case may be, that's what you draw. So me, I will wave whatever hair, shape, and form like that. You know, if, if, there's, if there's whatever structure there is there. Second thing I'll do is I'll look at how high up the wave goes to the head. Is it going to, is it like a, is it like um, um, a part in the hair or whatever and I look at where the top of the head is and then I build off of that over and I connect it to the other half of that line roughly like that if you see an area where the hair is pushed out and it seems to kind of like indent back in again that's how I create the shape because it's the hair underneath 
that's pressing on the hair on the outside that's causing it to make that formation, okay? Everything's gonna weigh on itself, okay? All right, so the same idea with the other side, and, and literally that's the basic premise of hair. Truth be told, it can go so many different ways, but you're looking at the very basic shapes and forms. Make sense? I don't wanna put y'all to sleep, so we're moving through this one.